how God is worthy. Yes. Yes. Worthy of all honor. Yes. All praise. Oh, so tonight as I begin this second watch, I want to give honor to God who is worthy. Yes. Yes. He is worthy. Yes. Oh, honor and praise. And I don't know about you, I haven't always done what was right in God's sight. But I do love it. Amen. And I am grateful for His mercy and God's grace. To our President, Reverend Sam Robeson, to our uh, second vice president, Reverend John A. Richardson, to those who share the pulpit with me and share a commitment to preaching and teaching the God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. To the pastor of this church, my beloved brother in Christ. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. We can be lions. Yes, sir. To the officers, members, and friends of the Nevada, California, Interstate Missionary Baptist Convention, and my brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. I thank God for the privilege to be here one more time. I do not take for granted waking up in the morning, clothes in my right eyes with a reasonable portion of health and strength. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, when you go to sleep at night, you are as close to the image of death oh, as, <laughs> as you're going to get without making that transition. Yeah, yeah, I love it. And, and a long clock alone will not wake you up. So yeah, I, oh, I thank God for being touched this morning. Having had the privilege of being here today and hearing some of God's great leaders offer their testimony today. Yeah. And I have been blessed, blessed by the outgoing president of the Navy and by the visiting pastor from uh, an African Methodist Episcopal Church today. Yeah. Pastor Holloway. Grateful for what my ears have heard and what my heart has felt. I want to call your attention this evening to a passage of scripture found in Exodus chapter 2. Exodus chapter 2, beginning at verse 24. And then reading through Exodus chapter 3, verse 10. I want to read from the New International Translation of the Bible. And I pray that whatever differences there are from that version and the one you're reading from, that God will clear it up. Chapter 2, verse 24. God heard their groan, and he remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. So God looked on the Israelites and was concerned about them. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the desert and came to Oro, the mountain of God. There an angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight why the bush does not burn up. 
When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from the bush, from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, Here I am. And do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers. And I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now, Go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be I want to preach tonight using as a theme, all right, a God intervention, a human responsibility. All right, all right. A God intervention, a human responsibility. Yes, sir. Let us pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. For this evening. Thank you for this day. Thank you for your presence among us and for your touching us at the broken yes. place. Amen. 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 Thank you for inspiration that lifts our spirits. Thank you for music that soothes us and challenges us. Thank you for prayers that have been offered and yes. for prayers that have been answered. Yes. Now, Lord, it is preaching time. Preaching time. And Lord, there can't be no preaching unless the Holy Spirit come. So I bid the Holy Spirit come. Touch me, Lord. You. And I'll be sure to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. For it's in the name of Jesus. I pray and ask it all. Amen. God intervention, a human responsibility. Uncle Henry was my mother's oldest sibling. When my parents decided to move from New York to Atlanta, when most folks who had any sense were moving from the South to the North, my parents decided that my brother and I should be in time to start school. All right. And so we moved to Atlanta to live with Uncle Henry and Aunt Chestnut for a few months until our parents sold our home in New York. All right. All right. Uncle Henry was a huge man with a heart for people that matched his six foot two, 300 pound frame. When not working for the Railway Express, he exercised his talents as a jack of all trades. By doing all kinds of work for people he knew did not have the money to perfect pay professional contractors. Once my brother and I arrived in Atlanta, we became willing helpers and apprentices to Uncle Henry. 
late that summer, Uncle Henry took me and my brother to a house where a stove had to be installed. Uh -huh. yes, Uncle Henry patiently explained to the two of us what needed to be done and how to do it. He patiently answered all our questions and then told us that he would be back in about an hour. In the meantime, at the age of 14 and my brother age 11, we were to install the gas stove. And we were to check the gas line to make sure there was no leak. Uncle Henry would probably gotten arrested now for child neglect. That was not the case. We were old enough to fully recognize the danger involved if we did not do the job correctly. And we were concerned about the responsibility Uncle Henry had given us. Nevertheless, Uncle Henry left and expected the job to be completed by the time he returned. Uncle Henry turned the task of installing the stove over to us. We did not know the owner of the house. We had not talked to the owner. We had not made a commitment to do the work. We had not negotiated a fee for the job. We had not created a need for the stove. But my brother and I were given the responsibility of fulfilling the promise that Uncle Henry had made by completing the job. Despite the obvious differences between our situation with Uncle Henry and the situation our text describes of Moses' encounter with God on that day in the Arabian Peninsula, I believe that the two incidences have at least one thing in common. That one thing is that the responsibility for doing an important job was placed on the shoulders of persons who had nothing to do with creating the problem or with promising to resolve it. Is for you and I and for the Nevada, California, Interstate Missionary Baptist Convention. And therefore, this evening, I implore you to pray with me as we walk around this text, wow. using as a theme yeah. a God intervention, yeah. a human responsibility. Yeah. Consideration is a God who heals. What had begun as a mutually beneficial relationship had turned ugly. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Joseph, the beloved son of Jacob, had saved the Egyptians from the consequences of a severe drought. As a result of his God giving yes. wisdom, the Pharaoh had rewarded Joseph handsomely. And the Israelites lived in peace yeah. with the Egyptians. Yeah. However, all that changed when a new Pharaoh came to power yeah. Yeah. that the Bible says knew not Joseph. Yeah. 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 Fearful of the growing number and strength of the Israelites, yeah. Yeah. the new Pharaoh began enslaving the Israelites. Yeah. Yeah. For generations they suffered and toiled, but the Israelites continued to cry out to their God. Yes. And the text says, God heard their groan. Yes. And God saw the sons of Israel and God took notice of them. Yes. What an amazing statement. Mm. At a time when many people in the then known world believed in an impersonal God who had Beings as pawns in a celestial. 
pray and a God who they believe will hear their cry. Yeah, yeah. We are a long way from Egypt. Yeah. And yeah. the situation of the Israelites. Yeah. But on this Tuesday evening, yeah. on this second night of the revival yeah. Yeah. called the convention, yeah. Yeah. I am glad that we have a God who yeah. hears our cry. Into a promise. 
am encouraged tonight. God not only hears my plea, sees my situation, and takes notice of me. But there are times when that alone is not enough. Israelites. 
and give them a new land. Yeah. A land flowing with milk and honey. Yes, sir. Yeah. It is at this point yeah. that our story seems to take a strange and unexpected detour. Yes, God has made a major announcement yeah. about what God intends to do yeah. on behalf of the Israelites. But then God says to Moses, Therefore, Therefore come now, yeah. and I will send you yeah. to Pharaoh yeah. so that you may bring my people, yeah. the sons of Israel, yeah. out of Egypt. Yeah. God had promised yeah. to overthrow the Egyptians, yeah. but then God turns to Moses. Yeah. And tells him that he will be the one yeah. to do the job. Yeah. Yeah. Moses is shocked yeah. and tries to come up with every excuse right. possible yeah. for not assuming responsibility yeah. for the job. Right. He gives God all kinds of excuses yeah. as to why he is not the right person yeah. for the job. God is a useless enterprise. For <laughs> God rebuts every excuse and insists that Moses is the right one for the awesome and overwhelming responsibility. Finally, in desperation, Moses accepts the job that God has given him. conclude that God has not treated Moses fair. It was God who made the commitment to free the Israelites, not Moses. It was God who had made promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not Moses. It was God who had brought them into a wilderness situation, not Moses. The responsibility for completing the task of freeing the Israelites from slavery on Moses' shoulder. That seems rather unfair, but the truth is that God has given Moses the responsibility to make his life count for something. God has afforded Moses with the opportunity to partner with God in God noble work of redemption. God could have done the job all by God's sake. But God chooses to enlist a sheep herder in the struggle to rectify and restore, correct and complete God's work of making humanity everything they ought to be. God promises Moses that God will be with Moses. 